Shalom Aleichem, everybody, welcome to the first evening concert, the first day of our international virtual Why I Love Yiddish Fest 2020 Hanukkah edition. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm wearing a hat and I'm alone in the Betsy Hotel but I'm wearing a mask so that you will please wear a mask and wash your hands and keep your distance and just stay safe until the vaccines are here and we can all go out again and meet in person and celebrate our Yiddish guide all together and still stay virtual. Because what we've learned, if we haven't learned anything else, is that there's a whole world of people who love Yiddishkeit and Yiddish language and klezmer music and Jewish culture. And we are very privileged to have with us tonight one of those luminaries and his band. So uh, what we are going to see tonight is a concert of Orot Menatsnetim, or you could also call it, call it Blischendestern. But if you really want to know, tonight we're going to see a concert of shimmering lights with the great Yale Strom, who is a pioneer in Jewish culture. Um, for more than three decades and 75 research expeditions, Yale has become one of the world's leading ethnographer artists of klezmer music and history. I mean, he combines klezmer with Hasidic nigunim and Roma and jazz, classical Balkan, and all sorts of Sephardic <laughs> motifs, which I'm sure you'll hear tonight. He was also the first klezmer musician to perform at the United Nations General Assembly. His research has resulted in photo documentary books, documentary films, CD recordings. He's the author of the book of Klezmer, the history, the music, the folklore. And let's not forget that now he's the author of the beautiful new illustrated children's book, Schleimel Boimel and his lucky dreidel. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the great Yale Strom, Elizabeth Schwartz and Jeff Pekarik giving us a beautiful concert of shimmering lights. Yale, why don't you join us and say hello to the lovely people. Sholem Aleichem, Yale and Elizabeth and Jeff. Aleichem Sholem. Aleichem Sholem. Aleichem Sholem. Aleichem Sholem. Aleichem Sholem. Aleichem Sholem. Um, and I'm very excited to have you here on the first night of our Hanukkah festival. We're here live. I'm live at the Betsy Hotel on Miami Beach one of the top hotels in the world, nice. and there's no one else in the building. <laughs> Only me. It's pretty amazing, and I'm very honored that they have chosen to sponsor our festival. But the That's good nice. news is, very soon they're going to open, and they're going to start slowly bringing people back in, and we are all coming back to life. So you are very lively. And I love you guys a lot. I've known you for a long time. So why don't you go ahead and take the stage and please have a good time. And when you're done, call me back and we'll schmooze for a little while, right? We will. Ladies and gentlemen, Yale Strom, Elizabeth Schwartz, and Jeff Pekarik in Shimmering Lights. Great. Thank you, everybody. So uh, without further ado, um, the very first song, is the classic uh, Mamatsuri Yeshua T, uh, or in Yiddish, Mamatsuri Yeshua C, but, um, and, and perhaps many of you sung it tonight after you lit the uh, Shabbos candles first, then you, you know, unseen and sweet and lake, you lit your, your no, second you, candle. You light the Hanukkah candles. Oh, no, you. that's right. Yeah. It's okay. That's I'm okay. here. That's I got right. you back, baby. That's right. The, the rabbi just told me that's right. You like the, obviously, you like the Hanukkah. Let, First, More again. authority than a rabbi. Though, Anyhow, right? Elizabeth will tell you where this song comes from, and please enjoy it. This is a, a prayer you'll certainly know, but the melody is a little unusual, which is why we were so drawn to it. This is actually a Moroccan Jewish uh, 
melody for Mal Tsur. I believe, and starting in the 50s, the great ethnomusicologist, lovely Yiddishist, and just a lovely person that I had the luck to meet a few times and even do some work with her, Ruth Rubin. Anyhow, so, and this was a song that my Bubba knew and my father knew, and this, the melody is bulbous. You know, all cultures like to sing about, uh, uh, who, or, or, who are poor, and, and all cultures have rich, but they also have many poor. And uh, so were the Jews. There were a few rich Jews, but most of us were middle to lower class and poor. And when you're poor, what is dear to your heart is food. So, uh, and potatoes was eaten because it's a root vegetable, it keeps a long time and it's cheap. 
and that hard to grow. So I took the melody of Bulbis and and wrote new lyrics and Elizabeth will talk to you and the song is, so everybody out there, I hope you start to sing this song to, from many Hanukkahs to come because it's simple and it's kind of cute. And Elizabeth will tell you, it's called Latkes. Sunday Latkes, Monday Latkes, Tuesday, Wednesday Latkes, Thursday, Friday Latkes. On Shabbos for a special treat, Latkes with sour cream, Sunday continue with latkes, mushrooms with latkes, cabbage with latkes, lunch and dinner latkes, more and more latkes. On Shabbos, after stew, latkes with whiskey. Sunday continue with latkes, onions with latkes, garlic with latkes, fried and grated latkes, again and again latkes. On the Shabbos, after praying, latkes with applesauce. Sunday continue with latkes, yesterday latkes, morgen latkes, oh, excuse me, that's Yiddish, mm -hmm. tomorrow latkes, Hanukkah without latkes is a scandal. Hanukkah without latkes is a shame. As we light the Hanukkah lights, my belly is bursting, no more hot latkes, gentlemen. So that happens to turn the improv and then I'll bring that, the, uh, the turn right there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Next to Pinsk and not far from Minsk. And that's the town of Stolin. They're known for, uh, in, for, in Yiddish culture, for the Hasidim and wonderful melodies. So this is a, a melody that I, I uh, found among some old uh, Klezmer um, notes. And so enjoy this waltz. A waltz that actually I learned years later on that my boba, if she rest in peace, she, she walked to her chippa, or she would say chippa, uh, to this valley. Stolen or what? Thank you. 
you enjoyed that, everybody. A beautiful waltz for the second night of Hanukkah. So now we'll take you from the wilds of Belarus to actually Turkey. Turkey. Uh, okay, this will tell you about this beautiful Hanukkah song, Azaremos Una Merenda. This is a Turkish Sephardic song. Let's have a party. What hour? I will tell you. Help me, my beloved. Help me, my life. And this is a macaronic song. So it's in Ladino. But help me, my beloved, help me, my life, this constant refrain is in Turkish. The first one puts the oil in the can, counting up to 10. The other puts the flour in a sack until 10 to make bormuelos in the days of Hanukkah. Let's have a party, what hour, I'll tell you. Help me, my beloved, help me, my life. <laughs> Azaremos una merenda, qual ha volo dire, yaraman, emrumeyaman. La una quita la zete, de un tene que ya está di. Jeff, nice. Yeah. Wonderful. And what's his face? Our Jeff, the carrot. 
And um, okay, so this next melody, um, uh, I wrote this melody some years back after Elizabeth and I were doing some research, ethnographic research in the province of Moldavia, which is uh, northeastern Romania, the capital city being Yash. And for those who know our wonderful Avi Hoffman, Avi is known for many uh, artistic uh, uh, pursuits and wonders, but particularly Yiddish theater. And so I don't have to tell him, but the listeners might not know, Yash is where we really got our first Yiddish theater. Yiddish back, musical Yiddish, theater. Yiddish, excuse me, right? Yiddish musical theater back in 18, oh, I want to say 76. And eventually comes over to the United States and is the, tr the true antecedent of Broadway musical theater. Why I bring this up, we were doing research there in a small shtetl, literally a dorf in Avramen. And the only one to remember Jewish music was a Roma gentleman, a Tzigan, a gypsy, a Roma gentleman. And his name, and so I call this Ben Avraman, the son of Avraman, in his honor. And but then I wrote some lyrics some years later, and Elizabeth will tell you what these uh, Yiddish lyrics are. Come on over to drink red wine. I want to dance and drink and yell. Come inside to eat and stuff yourselves on stuffed cabbage with cracklings. Come inside to hear the klezmers and gaze at the two dancers. Come inside to hear the klezmers and put your pennies on the table. Klezmers play a broom dance. Pull on those strings without shame. We're going to play pranks all night and laugh and crack jokes. Klezmers play a broom dance. She is all decked out with her garland. Dancing and drinking without end to be tipsy is the custom. Thank you. 
Sweet, 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 sweet
teacher gave a dreidel to me. Cast from a lead mold. Cast from a lead mold. Tivisimus is far. Tivisimus is far. Tivisimus is far. My uncle gave a small gift to me, a single engraved coin, a single engraved coin. Tivis and Moses like stepping on the singer's toes yes. or was that more like singing stepping on her vocal cords i don't know you live here we'll have a conference later yeah. okay <laughs> yes all right folks uh mea culpa, mea culpa. almost there okay, okay. Jabal, which, after 2020 we don't win. sweat the small stuff anymore two, two times three all right so we'll keep this intro short um we will uh dedicate this to to uh, uh um a friend of ours that I know Avi knows rather well, and that is Tova Felchu. Tova Felchu was in our audio drama. Um, yes, we also write. Elizabeth is a really fine writer, and I just sort of tag along. And uh, we did an audio drama some years ago, called, and you can get it on audible.com, called The Witches of Lublin. The Witches of Lublin. And uh, she plays the lead role, and it's sort of a uh, a, a Yiddish feminist uh, surrealistic piece that takes place in Pesach. So this is the tune that didn't make the play. <laughs> we just didn't have space, but I hope you enjoy it. The Witches of Lublin with wonderful uh, arrangement by Jeff Vicker. <laughs> Double plectrums 
Let's bring on the wonderful Elizabeth Schwartz. Does a playing, she does a fucking. Okay. And she will be playing her tenor, or, or is it baritone? It's my her, baritone yeah. ukulele, bro. Baritone ukulele. Bro. And here we go with a classic tune. One that you yeah. can all sing along, at least the chorus. Eight, six. Singing kindle a zammer as a salmon, and the gundal of Elach and the tender was a scrapman. The mama cocked a luxury zip, the kasha in the gnagler, the gundal yap de chaga vel mesh beer and zip in the Thank you. 
references um and then we all have to sing the english at least together so when you guys are ready <clears throat> oh and there's a little surprise that yale wrote in here yeah. you'll hear no let jeff open up and do that okay is that in g minor mm -hmm. no <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's okay i thought it was test <laughs> Oi, Hanneke, Oi, Hanneke, 
Vajante verschöne alles der Gef heilige nicht noch sehne alle Nacht in Dreh spielen mir sittig heiße Wort gesessen mir geschwinde sind Kinder Sim Lord God Vater Nisim mein Kind gehe tanzen in Korn Sagt al Hanisim Lord God Vater Nisim mein Kind gehe tanzen in Korn Je hitte hat vertreten dem Säune dem rote Jach in hotten Besam Mikdash gesingen am Nazea die Stadt Jerusalem hat wieder euch gerettet und sie in einem Leben hat jeder gestreckt der Rebe dem Gebe je hitte Makabi Leut heu Soll ja der Basinde, Basin, die Winde, in Wien, das Volk sollte heu. Soll ja der Basinde, Basin, die Winde, in Wien, das Volk sollte heu. You'll pay for it later, I'm sure. <laughs> I forgive him. All right, Avi. It's a, it's, a, it's a holiday of miracles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's one of them. <laughs> so right. thank you, Shimmering Lights. What a beautiful concert. And ladies and gentlemen, this concert is available on CD. 
And yes. you can get it at yalestrom.com. Yeah, thank you, <clears throat> folks. You get a lot of other things there that are really, really amazing. Um, Yale, Elizabeth, Jeff, wow. Um, you know, a few things. First of all, that last song, we used to sing a different lyric. And I think it was because the Shulam Aleichem folk shul was so afraid of, you know, ala nisim, right. religious stuff. So we sang, la mira le zingen und la mira le springen und la oh. mira le tanzen in Korn. Oh, interesting. Instead of la mira zingen ala nisim. Right. right. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really fascinating. Yeah. Um, Yale. I, I'm, and all three of you, really, I'm fascinated so much by the mix of styles. You know, I mean, you are able to mix into these songs that some of us know, and then there are several songs that no, none of us know, because you found them and discovered them. But when you start to mix in the Ladino and the jazz and the, you know, the Sfaradi and the Mizrahi and the Arabic sounds, how, you know, I'm just curious from a, from an, I guess from an academic perspective, how do you gauge those kinds of stylistic additions and changes and, and you know, parts of the music? Right. You know, that's a good question. Um, because I think uh, musicians and musicians who are also, you know, academicians like myself, um, you know, you sometimes struggle with it. You know, some people come to it and say, you know, it's got to be what the, the, the sama, echte, genuine, authentic. And um, this is, you know, an, a story I, I just say, you know, so someone says, you know, yeah, we, yeah I love that, reg I love that uh, Freilach she played, but it's not quite from this night, it's not quite like what I heard in 1913 from this old 78 I have. I said, well, let's hear it, let me learn. Oh, you know, as, as you hear the scratches and you go, so that's a very beautiful piece from 1913, you know, by whatever, the Boybarik or Capella. Yeah. Um, but then I said, guess what? Shmuel, uh, their musicant, Shmuel, their fiddler, who, who played in the Boybarik and Capella in 1913. Let me think. I think his great, great, great grandfather in 1813 played a little differently from him. And then the, even the great, 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 great Grandfather in 1713 played it even differently, meaning once it becomes codified, meaning, oh, it's recorded, that's the way it should be. But people are moved. I, I mean, Jeff can talk to this, but I think I think a, a, if music organically comes from your heart and, and, and you're trying to tell a story, happy or sad or somewhere in between, um, I, and, it, and it feels organic instead of kind of like, a, 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 you know, you're trying to, you know, match chess pieces or something, um, people will go with it. It does, you know, there are some pieces I play more traditionally quote with that are, it's just the notes that, that, that whoever wrote it, uh, other times I'd like to add that. And I think, you know what, now that I think I know, I have been in, for example, Hasidic circles by a tish, by a tish and Shabbos, where of course we're just singing. So the instruments are our voices where I, go around, purposely, I went around to hear the other Balabati, I'm listening to them singing. Some are singing with the Rebbe, some are singing in tune with the Rebbe, some are singing harmony, some are singing out of tune, some are singing, uh, they're doubling the rhythm, I mean, they're changing it. Right. And the Rebbe's not saying, oh, 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 that's Pasnish. Right. No, because right. why? It's coming from the Neshama, and he, 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 you don't want to put a damper on that. So I think, I think for all in all genres, I think musicians around the world. I mean, wouldn't you agree, Jeff? I think well, I, I have a, I have a little bit of a schizophrenia with that whole thing between doing guitar and bass. Because when I play bass, I think of all this really cool research and really cool, you know, old books and and old recordings and all that kind of stuff. Because I was trained on bass. It was really my, you know, the, the, that was the instrument that they really, you know beat over my head and poked at my finger with pencils and said, no, that note's flat. So I, I think of the past, but then when I play guitar, I think about all the other guitar players. I think about, you know, like uh, how would Fred Benedetti play it? How would Adam Del Monte play it? How would Django Reinhardt play it? Hmm. How would, um, you know, Stevie Ray Vaughan play it? Right. How do you, you know, it? and it kind of comes to you in different times. I mean, I think, and sometimes you think of the oud players, I think back on old recordings of Victoria Hazan and stuff like that. And you think, 
oh my gosh, this is, this is, ooh, this isn't, I mean, I'm not even playing the right instrument. I'm playing, <laughs> I should be playing something else or a bazooki. And then, so gu guitar gives me like a little bit more of a flight of fancy. Whereas on bass, I, I think I, I feel a little bit more like I owe something to the, to the boneyard. You know? <laughs> right. right, right. That's the next album title. <laughs> right. oh, yeah. So yeah, so you know, so so Shimmering Lights. What was fun about it was was being able to mix and I mean, on the on it's an octet. So when people listen to it, they'll hear us three and um, and you know five other wonderful musicians. Uh, uh, Sarah Caswell, one of the great jazz musicians, violinists in the world, and uh, David Wallace, one of the killer violists, almost Hoffman, almost Hoffman. And, uh, Israeli, amazing lute player, Fred Benedetti, amazing classical guitar. So we all came with our own strong suits and wove a, a, a new quilt, <laughs> I guess is the best way to put it. You know, let, you know, we have to go soon because we're already past an hour. We've already lost our website uh, for now. But okay. um, I have a question, which is really fascinating to me, Yale. You know, when I met people like, when I meet people like Efim Chorney and Suzanne Gergus, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and you know, a lot of the ethnomusicologists who live in Europe and right. were living in the shtetls or near the shtetalach and they heard the music and they were in, how did you come to this? Well, yeah, well, cause they live there and they still live there. I know Efim does, he lives in Kishinev. Um, I, you know, I get, you know, I thank my parents, my mother and father, you know, I grew up in a home with, you know, American culture and baseball and I love sports. I was a uh, very good, if I may say, cross country track and field runner in high school and college, a side of me no one knows about. Um, but, uh, but steeped in um, the love and respect for Yiddish culture, even some Hasidic culture, because my, my grandparents on my father's side were Hasidim. And, um, but when I, when I took the initial trip, in fact, it was Jeff here. He's the first person on the planet to know about it before I told my parents that I was dropping <laughs> on a law school was Jeff. Cause I went to Jeff and he saw, talked about the bass. And you know, I don't just say this, I really mean it. Jeff is such a great musician and all around. So I knew selfishly now I'm saying this. I don't think I ever told this. I said, man, if I get Picaric to be not only the bassist but like the key guy in my band, then we started off with a strong bass, right? You don't start off with a roof of a house, right. you start with a bass. So Jeff said, go for it. You know, I love he lives, I love folk music. So I went off and I researched it. And when I was researching, I love talking. You know, some people say, you know, do you feel like you were born in a different century? You seem like you like to hang out with old people and talking about the stories. And I do, I always call myself like at the Hanukkah for bringing, while the other kids were maybe playing and off running in the basement. I'd be the one sitting around by the, the Fethers and the Mimas and the Zetas just kind of hanging on their words because the stories were like like movies in my head. So I think that's what, you know, I loved, um, I love that culture and I love the history. And, uh, and, and I ended by this. So Jeff, I said, oh, I'll be back in two months. He said, great. So six months later, I called Jeff from Budapest and I said, hey, Jeff. And the first thing he said, where the hell have you been? We've been waiting. When are you coming back? I said, oh, uh, pretty soon. And another seven months went by. <laughs> So anyhow, but that's another story. So, you know, I come from my research, the love of it and the travel and, and hope to continue as long as the, um, as the, as the, the body, the goof is willing. Beautiful. Well, wonderful concert. Thank the three of you. And this is not the last time we're going to see you on, in, in this little festival. Because no. on Sunday morning at 12 noon, why don't you tell us what you're going to be uh, doing for us? Well, I'm proud to say I just came out with my second children's illustrated book based upon some ethnographic research I did <laughs> in the 80s in Romania. It's a Hanukkah story. It's called Schleimel Boimel and his lucky dreidel. Schleimel Boimel, written muzzle dick and dreidel. And Boimel means oil, so Solomon oil. And it's actually, a, you know, it's for all ages. I mean, you know, young kids, there's illustrations. Um, and, uh, but what's wonderful is it's in English, so you read it from left to right but it's in Yiddish, turn it over and you read it from right to left. So it's in Yiddish and English. Oh, wow. And, 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 and that's really, really cool. So there's illustrations. So come and then at the end of it, I'll play a few uh, Romanian Jewish melodies. But the beauty is 
um, to, and, and I don't, I'm preaching to the choir when I speak to Avi because he's been doing this for his whole life. But Yiddish culture, I think, can't just rest on the laurels of the past. Right. Um, but you have to push it forward or become stale. And young people will just say, ah, I, that's nice, but it's the same old same old. So I am writing new stories and, you know, and they're steeped with old culture, but new culture. So I think that for me, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I think Yiddish culture to bring new audiences must push forward into the Kim Adikasaitan. That's absolutely right. Halavai, halavai, halavai. Halavai, You know what the beautiful thing is, as I've been learning more and more as we're doing more of these festivals and performances, there are so many younger people discovering what you have brought to the world and taking it to new places. You know, Josh Dolgan and Michael Winograd and all, and you know, the Yidlife Crisis boys with their Yiddishkeit. I mean, it's just really amazing how much is out there. Um, right. Now you mentioned Tova Feldshu. Yes. Which is of Lublin. Well, I am very proud to announce that on Sunday evening, my second schmoozing with Avi episode two is going to be my schmooze with Tova Feldshu. Oh, well, give yeah. Her Greece. Give her Greece, yeah, give her our love. Yep, she wrote a new book all about her life and her mother called yeah. Lilyville. So it's video, right. right. So, oh, Shainam and Halsik and Dank, thank you, you for so us. very much. Um, I'm I'm gonna, gonna, um, a git yontif to everybody. Yes, a git yontif, a git Shabbos, bizintik in the free. Yeah. Uh, Svola for Zager in the in Florida, Nina Zager in the uh, in the uh, West Coast. Yes, nine o'clock uh, in the morning on the West Coast, twelve noon. Eastern time, Schleimel Boimel and his lucky dreidel. Beautiful. All right. All right, so I'm gonna let you guys go and I'm gonna talk to my audience for a little while, Thank tell you. them what to do and what else we have. And I'll shame them and how it's looking done, guys. Oh, I love All you guys. Love, Bobby. Stay healthy, everybody. Thank you, Bobby. Ladies and gentlemen, Yale Strom, Elizabeth Schwartz, and Jeff Bacarek, shimmering lights. Thank All you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, everybody, we are very excited to finish our first night of our Hanukkah Fest. Um, it's uh, it's going to be a fun weekend. I hope you'll join us. Tomorrow at 11 o'clock, we start with our Yiddish cooking classes. Es gesundheit. I think tomorrow it's about vegetable, vegetarian latkes uh, with vegetables and all sorts of uh, a twist on latkes. Then at two o'clock, uh, the Yiddish Glory. This is a Grammy nominated project, Yiddish Glory. Uh, Anna Sternschis and Psoy Korolenko from Toronto doing Laughing Against Fascism, the jokes and songs of World War II, followed by a beautiful nighttime concert called See the Light, a celebration of Hanukkah miracles. And then finally at 10 p.m. tomorrow night, a new, completely new recorded live version of Klezmer in Quarantine, Yiddish tangos, with maestro Aaron Kula. On Sunday, another Eskizunter Hate at 11 o'clock, Schleimel Boimel and his lucky dreidel at 12 noon with Yale, and then my sweet Yidlife Crisis boys doing a Hanukia side chat with Yidlife Crisis. And I'll be joining them after that. And then finally, four o'clock on Sunday, our second episode of Schmoozing with Avi, which will be a repeat of the first 30 minute edit of all our schmoozes from the last festival. And then a 30 minute interview with me and the great Tova Feltru talking about her new book, Lilyville. Finally, on Monday, we're doing a fundraising event for the Yiddishkeit Initiative, for Why I Love Jewish. It's called Hanukkah in Jazz Time with Aaron Kula and his brother, um, who is uh, Erwin Kula, a rabbi um, and cantor up in New York. In any event, they're doing a great performance. If you go to our website, yiddishfest.org or whylovejewish.org, sign up. It's $18 for the concert. 
but we get a percentage of that back to the Yiddishkeit initiative, but you have to pick why I love Jewish. When you pick your affiliated organization, pick why I love Jewish. And so finally, you know, this is a time of gift giving. So look what I have. We have an olive tote bag and why I love Jewish on the back. And you could buy this. You could have these in any letter of the Hebrew Yiddish alphabet. And so in the tote bag, you can buy more gifts to give to your friends. For instance, you can have a YI mug. Look at that. There's also a Why I Love Jewish mug and a Kvelling mug and a schmoozing mug. Go to our website, whyilovejewish.org. You'll see all our merchandise, not to mention our books, A Breed Apart and Legends of the Aleph Bet and Curious, Curious Rabbinic Tales, our new book that just came out. And one of the best ideas that I ever heard came from Amy London to take the Aleph Bet letters and turn them into a coloring book for adults and children. All the beautiful letters of the Aleph Bet. For instance, this is the letter Kuf. And it's beautiful and you can color it in any way you like. So, Go to our website, get the merchandise, buy our gifts, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please donate if you can. We offer these programs for free. And, but that doesn't mean everybody isn't getting paid. All the musicians are getting paid. All the performers are getting paid. Um, uh, but, but, you know, we don't want to charge the audience. So if you can, and if you can afford anything from and literally there is no amount too small so anything you can uh, help us with would be highly appreciated and uh, now ladies and gentlemen tomorrow is a new day so please wear your masks all right you have to be gesund und stark healthy and strong so you got to wear your mask buy a jewish mask maybe we'll start selling masks we don't sell them yet um but wear your mask Please wash your hands, socially distance, stay safe and healthy until the vaccine gets spread enough. It's going to take a while. It's not going to happen soon. So you still have to protect yourself. All right. And so before we go, I'd like you to, I want to thank our sponsors. Um, also, you see this amazing artwork. artwork. We are in the Betsy Hotel live, our festival sponsor. And on the wall, the artwork is by the great artist, Carlos Betancourt. And so I love this hotel. It's one of the greatest hotels in the world today. I'm not kidding. I'm not being hyperbolic. You can look it up yourself. Um, and they have been incredible friends of our organization of why I love Jewish. And so um, we're very grateful for them, to them for allowing us to be here in one of their many, many beautiful rooms. Um, and uh, we, I welcome the and thank the Chemstachov Society and the University of Miami. So um, sit back and relax. And uh, I will see you guys very soon.